Hey, this is Kip, and I'm going to give you the basics of using the autopilot in the Cessna 172 Skyhawk G1000 model in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And I'm running Flight Sim version 1930. This is right after the Japan update. So, you know, if you're watching this in the future, then things might have changed or been improved, but this is how it works today. So first thing you should uh, remember is the keyboard shortcut Control-1. That will zoom into the primary flight display, or PFD, which is the left screen here in front of the pilot. And this particular installation of the G1000 has an integrated autopilot system, and that is controlled by this section of buttons and dials on the left side of the panel. So we have a heading uh, dial that chooses a target heading to turn to. We have a set of buttons to engage the autopilot and choose its various um, modes, including the lateral and the vertical modes. And then we have an altitude selection or target altitude dial as well. So what I'm going to do first is simply hit the AP button here to enable the autopilot. And what that does is turn this status here AP to green. This whole section here from the roll, AP, and pitch, these three areas here are the autopilot statuses. The left status is your horizontal or lateral mode. The center is the autopilot status, whether it's engaged or not. It'll be blank if it's not, or green if it's turned on and say AP. And then on the right is the vertical mode. So when you first engage the autopilot, the modes that it's in is the roll hold mode and the pitch hold mode. And what that means is that the wings will be level. That's what roll hold mode does. In Microsoft Flight Sim 1930 that I'm running right now, today roll mode only levels your wings out. Realistically, it should actually hold a roll. So if you're banking between 6 and 22 degrees to the left or right, it should actually maintain that bank according to the G1000 manual. But in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, at this moment, it doesn't do that. It just holds the wings level. So if you hit autopilot engage, it'll level the aircraft out. And then pitch mode, it'll maintain whatever pitch the nose is at. Um, and maintain that. So I was pitched up just slightly up from the horizon at like one or two degrees. So it's holding that one or two degrees pitch up. Now, if you've never used the G1000 before, the basics of this display is that in the top left, you have your navigation radios for using VORs. In the top right, you have your communication radios for dialing into the tower, control, ground, etc. At the left side of the display, you have your airspeed information. In the center, you have your attitude indicator that shows if you're pitched up or banked left or right, pitched down. On the right side, you have your altitude information and your barometric pressure. You can change the barometric pressure by using this knob here to the right underneath the word barrow. So you can go ahead and change to the correct altimeter setting. And then parts of um, this attitude, this uh, vertical display here, the altitude information that you'll need to know are the selected altitude display, which is the top part right here on top of the altitude. And then there's also this little section here above the vertical speed indicator that shows your target vertical speed when you set that later. And I'll show you those in a few minutes. But first let's go over the lateral modes. The simplest one, it's on by default is roll, that levels it out. If you have any other mode on and turn it off and there, there are no lateral modes enabled, autopilot will use the roll mode. The heading mode will point us at a specific heading. So right now we're at heading 339. If we wanna to turn to heading, say 270, which is directly west, we can go ahead and use this heading dial here on the left. So when you interact with these dials, you can either mouse over the left or the right side to get the left curved arrow or the right curved arrow. When you do that and click, it'll change the heading by one degree. And you can see that changing right here. And the corresponding heading bug on the compass and teal will also move. So I can turn that to be one at a time. And another way to use this is using your mouse wheel. When you point to either the left or the right side, you can use your mouse wheel up or down to change 10 degrees, positive or negative. So I'm going to go ahead and mouse down until I get to a heading 
selection of 270. And you'll notice that it's not turning our aircraft to the 270 heading yet. And that's because we're in roll mode, which means just keep the wings level. So we just need to turn on a heading mode and we do that just by clicking the heading button over here. And that will start turning us to the left. You can see that it's now in heading mode for our lateral mode. Then it'll turn over to heading west at about um, a 25 or 24 degree. It looks like it's between 20 and 30 degrees. So um, like a standard rate turn. And then it'll level out at 270 and maintain that heading. So this is really nice if there's wind or anything, it'll just constantly be adjusting our heading and making sure we're at a heading of 270. The next lateral mode that you'll probably use pretty often is the navigation mode. Now, I don't have a flight plan loaded in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the nearest button down here. And I'm gonna scroll this FMS wheel, the outer ring of this wheel, to just pick an airport in the, um, that's just pretty far away. Let's go ahead and pick this 40KS. Um, whatever airport this is, it's 36 miles away, has only a thousand foot runway. But anyway, I'll go ahead and hit direct and then hit enter for activate. And you can see that's updated with this magenta line and I have a flight path entered now. So I can actually see that flight path here on the map, which is just to a single waypoint. But if you've configured a flight path in the map screen, the world map before you load in, then you'll have several waypoints in a row. And whenever you enable nav mode by clicking nav mode on, it will fly that course for you from waypoint to waypoint to waypoint. And you can see up here at the top, it says GPS. Now it doesn't say nav because the navigation mode actually has several different modes. The most common you'll probably use is GPS, but there's also a mode that will follow VOR towers. If you happen to turn it to GPS mode and it doesn't seem to, and it doesn't do anything, it could be because the um, navigation like sub mode is not set to look at the GPS route, but instead to it's looking at your navigation uh, radios, so your VOR radio towers. If that's the case, go ahead and click this button under the CDI label here and that will change you from VOR1 or VOR2 to the GPS mode. So I'm going to go ahead and turn heading mode back on just to bring us back over to the 270 heading. And now let's look at the altitude modes. So or vertical modes. There are several of these as well. The simplest to understand is the altitude hold mode. So I'm going to go ahead and click ALT here that enables altitude hold and a couple things just changed first it says ALT here so we know which mode we're in and then it says 3700 feet so it's holding our altitude at 3700 feet you also notice the selected altitude which matches this right here is set to 3700 so this is our selected or target altitude when you turn on altitude hold mode it will automatically set it at the nearest 100 foot altitude. So it snapped us to 3,700 feet. Now, what if I wanna change and climb to 4,000 feet? What I can do is use the altitude selection dial on the bottom left. Now there's two parts to this dial. The inner part, the smaller part, will turn us in increments of 100 feet. And the outer dial, if you can find it, uh, will actually turn us in 1,000 foot increments. So you can again use your either clicking with your mouse wheel, or sorry, clicking with your mouse or uh, turning the mouse wheel. I'll hover it over this to change your altitude. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this selected altitude, which is up here to 4,000. So just like with a heading mode, even though we've set our target altitude, we have to tell it how to get to that altitude now. So the first mode we'll look at is VS or vertical speed mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and click VS to turn it on. And again, you'll see the status here for our vertical mode change to vertical speed mode, zero feet per minute. And then it says alts or alts, which means selected altitude. So zero feet per minute means that right now it is doing a vertical speed change or a vertical speed mode for us at zero feet per minute, which just means it's just gonna hold us at our current altitude. 
So to change that, we use these two buttons down here, nose up and nose down. In VS mode, when you click these buttons, it'll increment feet per minute by 100 feet up or down. So if we want to climb, we hit nose up and we can hit it as many times as we want to reach our desired rate of climb. So we're going to do 500 feet per minute. You can see here that we're climbing. It's pitching the nose up. This is our vertical speed. So it's bouncing around a little bit, but it's basically trying to average 500 feet per minute. And then you see our altitude coming up. You can see now this is flashing because it's getting close to 4,000 and it just automatically changed to altitude hold at 4,000 feet. So when you use a mode like vertical speed mode to reach a certain altitude that you set, when it gets to that altitude within um, 50 feet, I believe, it will capture that and switch to altitude hold mode to keep you there. So that's how you can just say, all right, you know, go to 10,000 feet and just, you know, get there and you don't have to worry about it. It'll get there and it'll level off for you and then it'll hold that altitude. And something to mention is that the vertical speed mode does not manage your throttle, your engine power at all. So if you choose to climb, you may need to increase your throttle to make sure you don't stall. If you choose to descend, you may need to reduce your throttle to make sure that um, you don't get below your minimum speed, or sorry, that you don't get into an overspeed situation when you're descending too fast. So let's go ahead and do another do a descent now instead of a climb. We'll do it the same way. Use the altitude selection dial, choose 3000. I hit vertical speed mode to turn it on. It's on, but it's at zero feet per minute. So I hit nose down. And I'm gonna do a steeper climb here. We're gonna go 1,000 feet per minute, negative 1,000 feet per minute in a descent. And you see my speed going up. So I wanna keep it in the green. So I'm gonna pull back on my throttle manually to make sure that we don't stress the aircraft by diving too fast. And so this will go down until we get to 3,000 feet. And the ALTS just means that it's going to wait until it gets within that 50 feet or so of that altitude and then it's going to go to altitude hold mode the faster you're descending or climbing the faster it's kind of got the momentum of getting to that altitude um, the sooner it'll switch to altitude hold mode and then slowly level you off to end up at the selected altitude another way to do a change in altitude is a mode called flight level change or flc and the difference between vertical speed mode and flight level change mode is that with vertical speed mode, you're telling it what rate to climb or descend. You're telling it in feet per minute, I want to go 500 feet per minute up. I want to go 1,000 feet per minute down. And it will just maintain that rate. With flight level change mode, you actually give it a speed, an airspeed in knots. So the first thing I'm going to do is go look at our best climb speed that's our vy which is 74 knots so if i want to climb up as efficiently or quickly as possible using my best climb speed 74 knots i can use flight level change mode to do that so i'm going to go ahead and switch up to 5000 so i change my selected or target altitude to 5000 now i have to tell it how to get there instead of choosing vertical speed mode i'm going to choose flc or flight level change mode as soon as I click it, again, just like with vertical speed mode, nothing happens. And that's because just like the default is zero feet per minute with vertical speed mode, the default for flight level change mode is to just hold your current or set it at your current speed. Until I change the throttle or I change my selected airspeed, nothing will happen. It won't start the climb until one of those two things happen. So if I wanna climb at 74 knots, the closest I can get, because right now, if you click this, it just goes in increments of 10, is 76. So I'm just going to click nose down. Nose up and nose down, when you're in FLC mode, actually change this target airspeed, which is right here above the airspeed indicator. So now what it's going to do is maintaining 76 knots it's going to try to climb but it's actually not climbing right now and the reason for that is it doesn't have enough engine power so i need to move my throttle up my throttle was still low from doing the descent earlier so i'm just going to bump my throttle up and now it has the engine power it needs 
once you start the climb. And so the rate of climb isn't what matters, it's the speed that it's gonna maintain. So it's gonna choose whatever rate of climb that it can in order to have a minimum or actual just like the straight up speed of around 76 knots. So you can see it went from 500 to 700 and it's just gonna keep doing that until we get up to our 5,000 mark. I'm actually just gonna pull it back to 4,000. You can do that while it's in the middle of a climb it's totally fine and it'll adapt to it. So this will climb us up at 76 knots. You can see up here again in the status it says flight level change mode, target speed is 76 knots. And you can go faster or slower, it's up to you. Um, just remember you wanna obviously climb at a rate that's um, efficient for the aircraft that you're flying. And now it's gonna level off at 4,000. And we'll be back at 4,000 feet. So I'm just going to do a few quick um, turns and altitude changes just to show you um, that just with a little bit of practice, this will be really easy to do. Um, so say you're flying a visual route, you have um, a VFR plan, and you have the ATC telling you all the vectors for your flight. So ATC. You'll just be flying along, looking out the window, maybe looking at the map, looking up some information on where you're going, the runways, whatever. You got autopilot flying you along. And the ATC comes on, calls your tail number, your call sign, and says, um, I want you to, do, to climb to 5,000 feet and change to a heading of 330. So all I have to do is say, okay, 3,000 feet, or sorry, 5,000 feet, 330. So here's altitude, 5,000 feet, heading, 330 right here is 330 I was already in heading mode if I wasn't I would have clicked heading mode to turn it on so that's doing the lateral change for us and then I'm gonna hit vertical speed and hit up 500 feet per minute and make sure that my throttle is high enough to do that climb and that's it I'm now following that instruction If they come on the radio again and they say descend to 2,500 feet, turning of 030, I'll once again go to the heading, turn to 030 on the heading, set my altitude to 2,500 feet. So I'm going to roll my mouse wheel a few times, but then I'm going to have to use the inner wheel and roll my wheel or just click to make sure I get the smaller 100 foot increment to get to 2,500. I'm already in vertical speed mode, and now I'm just going to change it instead of climbing to descend. Let's do a really fast descent. I'm going to go 1,500 feet per minute, and now I'm going to pull back on my throttle because I want to make sure we don't overspeed and stress the aircraft. And now say, um, for some reason, I'm all of a sudden going to follow my GPS route instead. Well, I already have that loaded in. I click the FPL button, I can see that that's loaded in my flight plan to this airport I picked earlier. So all I have to do is, instead of using heading mode, just go ahead and click nav. And that's set on the GPS mode. And that'll resume our route, which is on the map over here. That's it. I hope that helps out. Uh, I hope you 